All right, in the following video, I'm going to cover some options you might have for lacquer and uh, applying lacquer on some of the turn pieces in your shop. I love lacquer. You know, I love shellac. Anyway, there's always a reason to use a particular finish. And I know there's a lot of stuff out there on the internet, on YouTube, for using lacquer. And I tried to do a little research, and I'm going to cover some things like um, what does a finish do as far as darkness and coloring of a piece? This is a piece of maple that I'll show you in more detail. But I applied four different finishes on it to see what it would do to lighten the wood or darken it or whatever. And this is a piece that I use for applying some lacquer-based friction polish right here. I had a hard time finding that. And I'm going to work on a little bowl. All right, this is the, um, the top side of the bowl that I haven't finished yet. And here is the bottom. Pure lacquer. I sprayed a finished coat of lacquer on top of that. Just uh, watch the video and you'll see that. That's probably the main event right there. Anyway, let me... Uh, move on here and we'll get into the video and we'll apply some lacquer to lathe turn projects. All right, now I'm working on the bottom of a bowl I'm gonna do for a club demo. The demo is on embellishing and texturing and that sort of thing. And this is Brazilian cherry and I thought this would be a good project to put a little bit of lacquer on. In my next um, finishing video, applying lacquer on the lathe. And this will be a good project for that. So I've got a little, little jar of lacquer and I've got a brush in there. I'm going to get a little bit of protection. Alright. You guys have been on me about uh, protecting my robust lathes and rightfully so anyway make sure this is uh, mixed up fairly well and this is thinned down quite a bit and I think for this particular bowl in this project I'm going to just do lacquer straight through and this will be considered maybe a seal coat Okay, and I'm going to go right down to that, that spigot and apply some, some lacquer. This is just some uh, brushing lacquer I get from a hardware store. Okay, now before that completely dries, right there, it's a, it, it's a pretty loose mixture of lacquer. So before this dries, I'm going to wipe off as much of that lacquer as I can. And this will certainly not be the last coat I put on there. All right. Now up around here, I've done some texturing with the Robert Sorby texturing tool. And let me bring you around so you get a better view of this. Now when I eventually reverse chuck this, I'll probably have to fix this area right down in here, apply some more lacquer to that area. So I'm going to come up here and just start applying a little bit of this lacquer to this texture area and this bead. Careful not to get too much in that beaded area because it can get kind of gunked up. We don't want to gunk anything up this morning, right? And if I get to it, I will show you the top side of this little bowl, what I'm going to do. And it certainly won't be completed nearly. All right, get that on there. Okay, find my little bit of paper towel here. I'm going to first go over that bead 
And for the bead, I used a, a D-Way beading tool. This is pretty dense wood, and this is soaking in, I think, fairly well. Get a fresh paper towel and really try to get in into that groove where my bead is. Yeah, I'll let this dry completely and I'll probably apply one or two more coats of this at this time. This area down here is uh, fairly dry. All right, I'm gonna turn my lathe on very slowly and just take a little piece of sandpaper and get in that groove around my bead. All right, now I like that. One reason I selected lacquer for this piece, a couple reasons. This is going to be a decorative piece, okay? I'm going to suggest to whomever this ends up with not to wash it and not to eat cereal out of it. Uh, so I think lacquer would be a good choice. Now, main reason is it's going to impart as little color as possible. If I put uh, garnet shellac or even blonde shellac on this, it might make it even darker. Okay, so I can put more lacquer on this. I could even put a little bit of spray lacquer to make it glossy, or I could put an oil on top of this, which I don't think I'm going to do. All right, now I'm going to save you a little bit of time from having to watch too much of this. I'm going to put maybe three coats of lacquer on that at least. And I'm going to put one more coat on. And I've got some brushing lacquer in this little jar. And I've got a brush in the, hand, in the lid right here, okay? And I've got some hot melt glue around the opening there to kind of make that a little bit more airtight because that lacquer thinner will uh, evaporate. So I'm going to just go over this with a little bit of hand sandpaper. This is, uh, what is this? Oh, that's a thousand grit. That's, that's good. Okay, I don't want to create any, any scratches in this. Uh, but if I really took the time, if I really wanted to have a nice, smooth surface, I would spend more time doing this. Put a coat of lacquer on it, sand it a bit. I'm not going to worry about this area right here. In fact, what I need to do is get a, a toothbrush and clean out. I've got some uh, little bits of paper towel in there. And I'm going to just take my, my sandpaper and kind of go over that bead just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to clean up the surface with just a little bit of lacquer thinner. Not very much, just enough to take the, the dust off that. I'll apply one more coat of lacquer and show you, but beyond that I'm going to just uh, do some of that off camera. Now that's really nice. It's really nice and smooth. and. Uh, I need to build up a little bit more of a thickness on that. And I think I'll start with the lathe running. And, and this is all about saving a little bit of time. Okay, now, got to be careful if you do this. You don't want this to dry on the surface or else you'll get these circular marks from your brush. So I'm going to take a paper towel, go over that and clean off um, any wetness on that surface. 
Yeah. All right. All right. I'll uh, maybe put a couple more coats on that. And what I could do uh, as an option at the end, I could spray that if I wanted that more shiny. All right. As you can see, I did decide to do a little bit of spray finishing on this piece. I've got some deft clear wood finish, which is a lacquer spray. It's a semi-gloss, and I really do like the results of this. Eventually, I apply about three coats of this. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm spraying this on top of a stool, and I've got a Lazy Susan in between the stool and the, the workpiece. And I am a little bit away from my lathe, so it's pretty well protected. And I really like the results of this. I'll show you some close-ups in a bit. All right, now I'm going to do a little section on friction polish. Lacquer friction polish, okay? Show you a couple little items I've picked up. This is a super gloss lacquer based friction drying polish. I got this from Penn State Industries. All right. And I didn't get this in time to show it in my uh, friction polish um, video. But I'm going to I'm going to apply this and use it as a friction polish. It's lacquer, so it'll fit into this particular video. So, um, and this really is formulated and maybe uh, designed more for pens and that sort of thing. But this will work. I think that'll be really really good. And I'm going to compare this to something I probably showed in my friction polish video. Uh, somebody had a video on, uh, it's kind of like shine juice, only with lacquer. So I've got lacquer, boiled linseed oil, uh, lacquer thinner in there. So that's a, a friction polish that you can mix up on your own. All right, now, this particular little item here, oh boy, that was... A little on the expensive side for as big as this is. Anyway, that's just my two cents on that. You can probably make make this a little cheaper. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to prepare this surface. Turn my dust collector on. I've uh, done a little turning on this with a skew chisel. I've gotten it uh, fairly well. Uh, smooth. So turn my dust collector on. I'll go through a few grits here. And I like to turn my lathe speed down when I'm using my drill. Good idea to take your tool rest out of the banjo. A little 220 on this. Now I'd rather spend more time applying a finish and showing you that part of it than sanding. So I'm going to stop there. I've got uh, an old uh, sanding disc kind of folded in half. And turning your lathe off and sanding with the grain can just save you so much time. It can be so much more efficient. And I think that'll be good. And as I apply a finish, 
I can uh, do the same thing with some really fine sandpaper. And I know it takes some uh, denatured alcohol to clean this off. Now I think what I'm going to do is on your right side over here, I'm going to apply this lacquer based friction polish. And I really had a hard time finding that on the internet. And on this side, I'm going to apply this uh, lacquer based shine juice. Friction polish, okay. Let's do this side over here first. Find me a nice clean paper towel. Okay, from here, all right, now. I'm gonna use a different color paper towel so I can kind of keep them straight. Over here, I'm gonna apply a little bit of this friction polish. But the video is about lacquer. All right. And I just want to see if there's any great difference in these two. If I apply them side by side, I don't know. All right. I'll probably put a couple coats on it. Doesn't look like it's building up very well there. Make sure I don't have any of those uh, circular scratches. Okay, and that's supposed to be really high gloss stuff. So let me go to my other homemade mixture. And I probably need to shake this up a little bit. Now, just looking at this first application of my my own mixture, if I look at this side with my own formulation of uh, lacquer friction polish, it looks better than this side over here. Huh? What does that tell you? I'm gonna let that dry. Put a couple more coats of each one of those on there, and I'll show it to you. Okay, now I literally have four coats of each one of these friction polish finishes on here. And they're finally starting to even out. They look pretty much the same, which tells me don't be afraid to make your own. I'm going to buff this a little bit with the grain, dry spot on my paper towel. Pretty pretty dry, so I'm going to turn my lathe speed up, buff that, buff both sides of that. Now this piece of wood is uh, pretty sure it's Bubinga, and I I could probably see a little bit better shine on that if I had a really really dark wood, but uh, you know you kind of get the idea. And I, I think that tells us something that, you know, maybe spending a lot of money on something doesn't make it all that much better. So I may come back and do a little bit of buffing on that, see if I can make that a little shinier. All right, I'm slowly getting a little bit of a shine on there. I've been messing around with this for about 15 minutes and I probably have five coats of my friction polish mixtures on each side of that. Well, I think a lot of it is just this wood is a little too, too light. Anyway, it's not bad. I, I can see a little bit of a shine there, so.
All right. All right, now I am going to apply four different finishes on this piece of hard maple. One of the things I consider when I select any finish is what's it going to do to the wood as far as color? Will it make it darker? Will it keep it fairly light? Now this is fairly light wood, okay? Uh, so what I'm going to do, so I'm going to apply some lacquer, okay, mix that up a little bit, it's on a brush, so I'll turn my, turn my lathe on pretty slow, just so I can speed this up just a little bit. Now I'm not too worried about the, uh, the finish, I'm not going to buff that and sand it and do all kinds of stuff. I want to just keep it uh, fairly thick, it'll dry, and uh, yeah, that's kind of what I can expect from just lacquer. That's some brushing lacquer, the container, if I can get that in the shot there. All right, so there's my first finish. Now, I'm going to apply a coat of blonde shellac, garnet shellac, and oil. And we'll see what that does to the darkness of the wood. All right, so here's some, some of my blonde shellac. Shellac flakes, actually. We just apply this with a paper towel. Alright, now, it's been my experience, if I compare lacquer to blonde shellac, this is usually what I get. These are very, very similar in appearance. Okay, so we got blonde shellac. Now I'm going to find some garnet shellac, and that's quite a bit darker. Okay, now I finally found my garnet shellac. These are from shellac flakes. And I can tell how dark that is. I don't have to label that garnet. It's uh, pretty dark to begin with. Sometimes when you expect to see something, you don't always get the results you thought you would get. Now I can see a difference already in this. There may be times when you want this color on a piece of wood, and to be honest, it's not one of my favorites. I've heard this uh, described as kind of a pumpkin pine, kind of a color, kind of orange. All right, so if we're comparing the maple right here to this, and you don't want that color in your your maple bowl, then don't use that. Okay, now, one more uh, finish I'm going to use, and that is an oil. I'll be right back. You've seen me use this earlier in this video. Okay, this is my varnish, poly, boiled linseed oil, uh, mineral spirit mixture. See what this does. Now I'm not sure if I can tell a big difference between the, the lacquer finish and this oil. Maybe this is just a little bit darker. Okay. Well, this might be just a little darker. I don't know. I'm not so sure. So you don't always get what you think you're going to get. Now, if I used a piece of walnut, maybe the oil would make that walnut darker compared to what I'm doing right here. Anyway, it is what it is.
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there was something that you saw that was worthwhile that you can use uh, on lacquer. Okay, let me move some of this stuff out of the way and I'll show you uh, some of the pieces I worked on and we'll do a little autopsy on those things. So you can always spray. Here is some uh, Mylan's Melamine Lacquer. Okay, and I learned that from John Barkley. Good stuff. Um, when I get a can of uh, lacquer like this from the hardware store, or like this one right here, I usually put those, um, I usually put some of the contents of the can in a jar. Okay, and uh, you can see that needs to be mixed up, but I've got it marked on there. Semi. Semi-gloss deft lacquer. There's one. I brought out my old spray gun. This is a Finex Graco uh, FX1000. And I've got a much bigger cup, but ordinarily that's all I would need. And I sprayed lacquer in this for many years exclusively, and it does a great job. The, the tip or the nozzle, the needle is 1.4 millimeter. And I've been doing a lot of airbrushing lately. And uh, yeah, that's a, a nice item to have. A little bit more spray stuff. Let's move all that out of the way. Now, um, this piece right here, and it was actually in that orientation on the lathe. So what I did was I applied some lacquer, some blonde shellac, and you'll notice I misspelled blonde. Oh well. Some garnet shellac, which did the most as far as making that darker. And then over here I've got some oil on that. And it really didn't do a lot. It changed it a little bit, made it a little bit darker. And my feeling is this is hard maple and maybe the finishes didn't soak in very much so there wasn't a great change. Um, anyway, that that's my take on that this is the piece of bubinga that i applied a couple different uh, types of friction polish on and i was not happy you know i think you could tell that i was not happy with the gloss so i put a piece of uh, macassar ebony on my lathe and i'm i'm pretty happy with that that came out pretty well and uh, I had to work pretty hard even to get that, so I'm not sure about that. Uh, and I opened up the video with this particular little bowl. It, one mistake I made on this that I point out in the video was I wiped on the lacquer here, and I later on kind of buffed that with a paper towel. Well, I just uh, totally destroyed the surface with a bunch of little you know, bits of paper towel in there. And I actually had to go back with my texturing tool and redo that. And, and then, um, so, you know, maybe a cloth if you do it safely. And eventually I did spray this. So I've got that completed. I got a semi-gloss spray lacquer on this. I'm really happy that turned out really well, nice and smooth and, uh, Maybe in a future video, I'll show you the top side of this. Uh, a couple final thoughts. Uh, wear good respiration protection. All right. Take that, take two, take two, take that, take two, take two. Um, a couple final thoughts. This is lacquer, nasty stuff. Wear a good respirator, a chemical respirator for vapors. Okay, that's, that's important. So I think that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, watch my videos. I appreciate it. Uh, subscribe and share and leave a comment and I'll talk to you next time. Thank you very much.